Hello and welcome to another farming sim tutorial. Um, this time this video is gonna go out in conjunction with the uh, Rust and Wear or Extend Wearable script that me, Red Phoenix and Yopi were developing over the past couple of weeks. And on this base game, Polymac 300 Cultivator, I'm going to show you how to set it up properly. Um, you need a bit of knowledge about Substance Painter and basically what we have here now is a more or less um, ready to use specular um, yeah so just as a recapture um, this is done with the giants template from vertex design and I'm not going over how to make a dirt map and a wear map uh, this is probably gonna come in another tutorial uh, this time in English as well I already made one in German, but I'm gonna do another one in English at some point. So, just as a recapture, we have our um, template set up where we have a couple of custom channels here dirt, moss, wear, color select, and we have our base layer, and we have baked all the maps that we need. So, I took the normal and AO out of the old specular map, and also same here. I have the old wear and old dirt that I can just look at how this looks here. So this is the old uh, dirt that came with the cultivator in the base game. And this is the old wear that came with the cultivator from the base game. Um, I'm actually gonna do some stuff on this here just to jazz it up a, a bit because um, the effect isn't really that great. So I'm just gonna go into brushes here. Um, yeah, the dirt one is, is fine. And I'm just going to paint some wear over it. Maybe even a bit off here. Also shows very well how the base game cultivate is are made. That they are a bit random at times. Alright, so something like this should be fine. Uh, here's another tine that's missing. Alright. So, how do we actually be prepared for Rust now? So the technical explanation is what will happen eventually is that uh, the shader that we uh, reprogrammed, so it's still a vehicle shader, it works somewhat the same but it uses this wear mask, so this mask, and adds the rust mask on top of it, so it combines the two to make the full rust mask. If you then use the implement, this wear mask gets reapplied and everything that is masked here will have wear back again. To actually get the rust showing, and also get it exported, uh, first of all we go into the texture set settings up here, and add another custom channel called user 4 and we can just name this rust we then go back into the base layer and you always should have one that is number one most important always make a base layer activate the rust and check that the rust is always set to black as all the other ones are and now we can just go wild. I will actually just do it very quick. Um, I'm just going to go into maybe Smart Mask. And, well, first of all, I'm going to make a new... Oh, let's just make it some reddish color. I know it's not really Rust, but it's Rust. It's just for us to show. All right, add a black mask. And then let's see what we can use here. There's probably some rust here. This one called rust ground, rust. Um, but I usually suggest not looking for rust, but looking for other ones. Um, dirt cavity sounds good. Let's see if we can use this. Uh, that may be a bit too strong. So let's see what we'll for. Oh, there's cavity rust. That sounds like a good one. I mean, it's not perfect, but. As a demonstrator, this should be fine. Alright. So this is our Rust now. Good. So when we export now, um, I will also supply 
um, an output template that is simply called giants um, vehicle spec with rust and what that does uh, as an explanation is very simple it takes the user for custom channel that we just added and we called rust and puts that into the alpha channel of the finished spectacular so we still have the where here the m and occlusion here we have the dirt here and the rust mask now here so now we simply export this so I'm just gonna put this into um, a custom folder that I did and these kind of textures I always tend to export as a TGA or Targa uh, because while PNG also supports um, opacity what it does when exporting is it already cuts out the opacity and you have um, an already pre-cut or pre-alpha multiplied texture so I will show you the two differences alright first I'm gonna export a Targa it usually takes a bit longer than a PNG because a Targa is uncompressed and I will also export a PNG All right, and I just realized this is an issue some people have sometimes is that it's purple but I'm just gonna open both now so that you can see what is actually going wrong here all right yeah <clears throat> so what is wrong here is that I forgot on this channel to deactivate everything I don't need so I don't need colors where moss dirt I don't need any of these. Maybe just leave color on so that I have a representation in here. But I'm just going to re export everything again. So once with a PNG and once with a TGA. Alright. And you see that it now changed. Alright, let's open the uh, PNG as well. And you can already see what I mean with its pre multiplied. So in here, you can't see the alpha channel as you can see here that's because uh, this is already pre-multiplied which is why I don't really like to use it you can still use it um, but it's up to you so all we are going to do now is we save this as a DDS I'm going to use the NVIDIA texture tools exporter um, which I'm going to link also you will have to make an account with NVIDIA developers but you don't have to uh, you can use other ones like uh, GIMP, for example, or there's also an, an Intel converter. In the end, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters here is that you save it as a BC3 because that is um, a standard compression format that supports RGBA, which is important for us. Right. That's it for Substance Painter, and now we're going to switch over to Giants. Okay, we're now back in uh, Giants Editor, and uh, all we have to do on how to, um, yeah, get this to work is one thing. First of all, be sure that you use the custom shader that we supplied, and you put it in your mod folder. Um, you will also need the Lua and everything, but this is not a tutorial I'm focused on. This is simply how to get the rest done. Um, for people that understand how to add scripts to a vehicle, uh, it is works exactly the same and we will also supply uh, one or two uh, mods that already have it set up. So to actually make it work now is uh, in the shader source, you are actually going to select our new shader now and in the variation look out for um, specular, uh, where is it? Specular color mask, specular alpha color mask, it's called. Uh, where is it? Color mask, color mask, there is it. Specular alpha color mask. So this is now pretty uh, looking like it's not supposed to do, but that's because we don't have the proper gloss map now plugged in. So we go into our folder and select our DDS and there we go. 
Now I'm just gonna quickly bring back the colors that were originally on here. So this is one. This five. Zero and this is zero. If you now scroll down, you have a couple of more options that uh, you can um, change. And I'm going over them in a second. I'm just gonna clean up some stuff that can look better at it. All right. So this is uh, the rest now. And how this works is um, RDT dot Z, which is the third value, is the whole rust. So everything that's um, yeah, that that's the mask combined. Is rusting now but this is also prohibited basically by how much wear you have so if you have no wear you're gonna have no rust if the vehicle is fully rusted and also fully worn out so if both is one then the last value will tell you how much of that is actually gonna get uh, worn again and this is just the wear mask uh, as I said earlier but as you can see up here there's still going to be rust on your vehicle, uh, which is why we are using two masks, or rather a combined one and a single standalone one. There's a couple of more things that uh, you can do with this um, with this sh shader. I'm going to show you in a second. First of all, it starts down here. So you have a rust UV scale, which is basically how much the texture is going to tile on everything. Uh, I suggest using it between 1 and 3 because uh, you can go up to 6 but that is actually pretty big. So roughly around somewhere here is a good value. The next is something that is called rust color. It's already set up pretty straightforward um, and it it is basically just a color multiplied with a texture so you can play around with this a tiny bit so you can see that you can make it a bit darker or a bit more red and the same goes for green and blue. The last value is the saturation where one is completely saturated and zero is black and white basically so you can play with that a bit as well. The next uh, line, I'm just gonna leave that at 0.75 because I think that's a good value. Um, the next line is rest specular and that is basically the same as all the others so the green is the glossiness so the more towards one the more glossy it is usually for rust it's kind of low so between 0.2 and 0.3 the next is the ambient occlusion which you don't need to worry about you can just leave it at uh, 0.6 and the last one is metallic you also should not worry about this because it's always zero for uh, a non-metallic surface which rust is, even though it's metal, the surface itself is not reflective and thus not a metal. And the last one is something called rust normal strength. Um, and that is nothing more how much you can see the rust normal map uh, supplied down here. And yeah, um, you should leave this at one or if you just want to get rid of it and just have the diffuse displayed, you can put it down to zero. And that is basically it, how you add it. Um, the extended where Lua script will do all the rest in game. But this is just a very quick introduction on how the shader works and how to set up the texture mask using Substance Painter. Uh, we will, from Vertex Design, supply a couple of new templates and textures uh, for this as well. Uh, so keep your eyes out for these, and I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.